Can anyone now here put up their hands and say, I am spotless, sinless, I have not sinned? Not one, subhanallah. Not one. Not even myself, because we are human beings. So the reality, we will hate the sin, we will hate the shirk, we will hate the bid'ah, but we will work on the brother or the sister in a way that we will try to help them come out of that shirk, come out of that bid'ah, come out of that sin, for example. But at the same time, remembering that this is a person who has declared the shahada and I have as well. They may have sinned differently to me, but in the same way I want to be helped, I need them to be helped and I will try my best to do that or at least make dua for them. This is why we say, you see a brother with a bottle in his hand, a bad Muslim would go around tweeting that and go around Facebooking it and WhatsApping it and so oning it. Subhanallah. Why? Because they want the world to know I saw that man with a bottle. But a good Muslim will do one of two things or both. They will either go to the brother, say, brother, you know what, this is something bad, and you know, you're a Muslim, come on, you know, inshallah, there's much goodness expected from you by the will of Allah, you're such a great person, you have so much potential, this thing is not going to do you any good, engage them. Not swearing, engage them properly to say, look, this is something that is unacceptable in the deen. You know, it will cause a lot of damage, a lot of harm. If you quit this, I think there are a lot of good habits that you have. Just quit this and so on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may open the brother's doors through your effort and you will be granted goodness. For Allah to use you to guide a single person is better for you than anything of, of the highest material value in this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Amen. That is point number one, you either go to him or someone who has an effect or impact on him and perhaps tell them to talk to him if you cannot talk to him. And secondly, make dua for that brother. Ya Allah, today I witnessed someone with a bottle. It hurt me, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, guide them, help them to remove the bottle. Help them to give up that bad habit and help me to give up whatever bad habits I have. Allahu Akbar. This is purity of the heart now. With that dua and that nasiha, if Allah wills, that person's heart will come onto the right path within a matter of time. We know so many people who had very bad pasts, but now when they've come up straight, subhanallah, they've gone very far in life in terms of the deen and become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many of us, perhaps we are much better today than we were yesterday. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant, grant us goodness. This is why we say, brother, when you have become religious, remember, when you are inviting others towards religion, you also came about slowly, so give them a little bit of time. The problem with us, we come on the deen after 50 years, and everyone else, we give them five minutes. <laughs> Wallahi, it's a problem in the ummah. We are facing it, we are not patient. We are supposed to be patient as Muslimin. It took you 40 years to recognize your maker. Why do you want to, in four minutes, create such a situation that remove a man from the whole fold of the deen, kick him out, curse him to the degree that you've buried him alive and you haven't given him more than four minutes to repent. You took 40 years, my brother. Thank Allah, he showed you the light. <coughs> Allahu Akbar, work on them. Continue working on them. The Prophet ﷺ's nubuwa, was not 23 minutes, nor was it 23 days, nor was it 23 months. It was 23 solid years. Allahu Akbar. So purify your heart when it comes to your relation with others. Because there is something known as Hukukul Ibad, through which a lot of what your heart conceals becomes manifest. We hate for the sake of Allah, the deeds that are done in the displeasure of Allah. We may hate for the sake of Allah, those who have absolutely no goodness in them and they have damaged the deen or they have caused lots of damage to those who follow the deen. But remember, even the non-Muslims, every single non-Muslim is a potential Muslim. If you lose focus on that, you have lost the path. Every single non-Muslim is a potential Muslim by the will of Allah. For as long as they are breathing, there is hope. Who is ready to invite them in the proper way? Allahu Akbar. A very big statement that brings tears to the eyes. Every non-Muslim. When the Prophet ﷺ made a dua 
for the enemies of Islam, one of the prayers were, Allahumma a'izz al-Islam bi ahad al-umarain. O oh Allah, grant strength to this deen through the acceptance of Islam of one of the two Umars. One was known as Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiyallahu anhu later to be known as, and the other one, Amr ibn Hisham, who was known as Abu Jahl. No sooner was the dua made, response came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This man came marching into this house of Al-Arqam, Ibn Abi Al-Arqam radiallahu anhu, as the books of history have made mention. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew that Allah is the one who guides. Just like he guided me, he may guide you or anyone on the street. So remember, when we say cleanse your heart and do not be judgmental, we need to understand what the statement means. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people who realize that we would like to help one another to become steadfast on the deen. And that help can happen in so many different ways, depending on the authority that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you as well. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Uthman radiallahu anhu has a sad end. In the last two years of his khilafah, there was a big fitna that happened between the Muslims. And I want you to listen carefully to this. This is the idea of extremism. You know, when people become extreme in the religion, they become fanatic. There is such a thing. Sometimes people become so fanatic, they become so obsessed with the little things of the religion that they'll make takfir on someone so easily. The Prophet ﷺ said, if a Muslim makes takfir on another Muslim, one of them is and the other one isn't. So you better be careful. And if someone says another Muslim is a hypocrite, one of them is, the other one isn't. So you better be careful. If one curses another Muslim, like la'na, one of them is and one of them isn't. To make kufr on someone. So the Muslims became like that. And the people that made them become like that were actually hypocrites. And there was a Jewish man, Abdullah ibn Abayb al-Sabah, who um, he, he started this fitna. He started making these rumors about Uthman radiallahu anhu, that he's trying to steal the wealth of the government. And he was giving it to his um, relatives and cousins. He, um, he was doing all these mistakes. He's, you know, he wants power. He wants, and some people, they wanted power themselves. Some people, they just got to their head where they just didn't want the rule of Islam. They wanted to keep changing things. And some of them, they took Uthman radiallahu anhu for advantage. They took his softness and his leniency for advantage. So they started making stuff about him. And you know, some stupid stuff. One man came in and said, Uthman, I've got three questions for you. He said, what? He said, did you go to the battle of Badr with the Prophet wasallam?" He said, no. He actually said it to Abdullah ibn Abbas. He said, did Amir al-Mu'minin go to the battle of Badr? He said, no. He said, aha. Why did he, did he run away from the battle of Uhud? He said, yes. He said, was he there under the tree when they gave pledge of allegiance to the Prophet ﷺ, which Allah mentions in the Quran? He said, no. And the man said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You know that extreme ideology? He says, Allahu Akbar, as if he, you know, he proves something that would make Allah pleased with him. And Abdullah ibn Abbas said, come here, come here, let me explain to you something. He didn't attend Badr because the Prophet ﷺ ordered him to look after his wife Ruqayya. And when the Prophet finished from that, he gave some of the spoils of war to Uthman radiallahu anhu and he considered him part of it. So that's one. As for him walking away from Uhud when he thought that the Prophet sallallahu died, well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the verse where he says, لَقَدْ عَفَ اللَّهُ عَنْكُمْ Allah has forgiven all those who walked away. So Allah forgave him. And as for the Pledge of Allegiance, well, the Pledge of Allegiance was done because of him. He was trapped inside of Mecca, long story. And the Prophet and the companions cried for him. And they said, you know, he's probably killed. So come under the tree and let's make a pledge of allegiance to the Prophet wasallam. They all put their hands together and there was Uthman anhu's hand that was missing. And the Prophet wasallam said, and this is my hand, the second hand, which represents Uthman radiallahu anhu. That's your answer, mate, <laughs> basically. But it never stopped. The fitna grew. Do you know what they did to him? Not one of the companions took part, but the companions they said, including Ali radiallahu anhu, Abdullah ibn Zubair, Zubair radiallahu anhu, there was also um, all the other companions who came in, and they said, let us fight them. Uthman radiallahu anhu said, no. The Prophet sallallahu told me that if I wear, Allah is going to make me wear the, a shirt, do not take it off, which is the khilafah. Number two, he told me to be patient, so I'm going to be patient. Number three, 
I do not want to die in my reign and while I'm the Khalifa and because of me a single drop of blood has been shed from any Muslim. He gave his life so that Muslims don't kill each other. Do you understand what that means? Even though he knew there were hypocrites, there was fitna, there were extremisms, all of that. He'd rather his life go than the Muslims killing each other. They blasted into his house while he was reading the Quran. And his wife was standing there. He was like 80 years old. He's reading the Quran. You know why? And he was fasting. Because the night before, he saw the Prophet Abu Bakr and Umar in his dreams. And they said, fast. Because tomorrow night, you're going to break your fast with us. So he sat there reading the Quran. One of the Muslim men who was weak, hypocritical, he walks in and he cuts the finger of his wife off because she put her hand out. And then he stabbed Uthman radiallahu anhu nine stabs. And he said, three of them are for Allah. And the rest of them were because something that I held resented inside of me which really means he only did it for himself. And the blood, the first drop of blood that fell from Uthman Adelano's body was on an ayah in the Quran which says, Allah. Allah will save you from them. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Uthman radiallahu anhu is a very unique example, very unique lessons to be taken away from there. And I'll leave that to you.